Saturday night, finally, the night you've been waiting for. A week ago, the girl of your dreams asked you on a date. Sure, that's not the old-fashioned way to do it, but hey, who's complaining? You get in your car after frantically cleaning it out to the best of your abilities. You start on your way to pick her up at her house, full of excitement. Pulling up to her house, a slight nervousness rises in your gut, but is overpowered by your happiness. She steps out of her apartment and looks absolutely radiant. And that nervous feeling shows itself again, but you pass it off as going on a date with the perfect girl. You open the door for her and let her know she looks wonderful tonight. Thank you, Eric Clapton. She smiles and blushes as she thanks you. Dinner lasts three hours, but it feels like ten minutes. Getting to know her was a dream come true. You were supposed to make a movie by 8.30, but it was already quarter past ten. You decide to go for a walk instead. Being October, it's quite chilly, and she has a thin, long sleeve on. You offer her your jacket, but she says she's already warm enough. After about five minutes into the walk, she grabs your hand, and you notice her hand is almost hot to the touch, but it feels good in your hand. At about midnight, you make it back to your car and start driving her home. The night had been perfect, and you're sad to say goodnight to her. Sitting in front of her apartment, there's an awkward silence, but you're working out the nerve to kiss her. Once again, that nervous feeling hits, but this time, it's almost more like terror. She slowly moves towards you, and she closes her eyes. Your heart is beating out of your chest, and you decide to chicken out. You act like you thought she was going for a hug and wrap your arms around her. You didn't have a chance to hate yourself because you realize you can barely embrace her because of how hot she was. Temperature hot. Your arms almost feel like they're sunburnt. You're about to ask if she is okay, but once you catch eye contact with her, you notice her face is very red. Did you embarrass her or was the heat getting to her? You walk her to her door and give her another quick hug. She fumbles with her keys and slowly opens the door as if she's sad that the night is ending. You head back to your car and sit there for a while, contemplating whether or not you should go back and get that kiss. You text her to let her know you had an amazing night. Before you send it, you read back through your texts. About five minutes later, something snaps you back to reality. A fire alarm starts blaring. You call her to make sure she's okay and make sure it's not her apartment on fire. She doesn't answer and you muster up the bravery to go check on her. You get to her door and knock, but no answer. You check the door handle and it's not locked. As you crack the door, smoke and an unfamiliar odor roll out. You shout her name as you slowly make your way in. Small one bedroom apartment with an open floor plan. You go in further and notice a red glowing shape on the floor through the smoke. You approach the glow and notice the temperature has skyrocketed. You finally get close enough to see the glow as you start to hear sirens in the distance. You realize that it's the shape of a body, almost. Your heart drops as you see a familiar form-fitting long sleeve shirt, at least a small piece. No arms to show, stomach area is almost gone, above a glowing pile of ash. One leg working towards zero, no skin and almost no skull for a head. The heat is so intense that you feel blisters forming on your exposed skin. You run out of the apartment as soon as you hit fresh air, you get lightheaded and the lights go out. You awake sometime later in the back of an ambulance handcuffed, covered in ice packs. None of that matters. All you can think of is what the hell did you just witness? Hello there, friends, and welcome to the Paranatural Podcast. My name is Ben, 
And I'm Willem Dafoe. <laughs> I got a story about him. Maybe later. Uh, and okay. tonight, we are very glad to have you with us. Glad you could join us as we come at you with a hot little episode. And Jacob tells us about spontaneous human combustion. Jacob, how the hell are you doing tonight, buddy? I'm in an explosive mood tonight. <laughs> oh, he's on fire, folks. He is <laughs> on fire. <laughs> Not how really. How you doing? doing? I'm doing great, bud. Are you? Doing absolutely amazing. I love you, Ben. So I have a question. Have yes. you seen the new Dahmer series on Netflix uh, yet? I read on Facebook that it is an unholy picture and not to let that evil into my house so no i haven't watched it yet it's on my what my watch list are you sure you're not talking about hocus pocus too <laughs> <laughs> anyway no it really is a really good series they get really in deep to everything in the whole story and they get some details that even i was not aware of like did you know when they searched his apartment what they found in his fucking bathtub um bodies head and shoulders <laughs> <laughs> that joke is courtesy of leilani by the way you guys can thank her for that one <laughs> uh, babe you got a a, a, a two groaner on that one a two yeah a two groaner <laughs> <laughs> uh, no wonder she's not feeling good uh, <laughs> well anyway that is literally all that i wanted to say about that it's a good series don't get me wrong but uh yeah that's the whole reason i brought it up uh other than that we don't really have any show business to get to other than if you enjoy our content including the really bad jokes then uh don't forget to leave us a five-star rating or review on your podcast player of choice and Tell a friend about the show. We really appreciate it. All right. I'm going to start this uh, <laughs> episode with an apology for everyone who heard that joke. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So am I. <laughs> Next, I would like to say my, uh, my dear mother gave me the idea for this podcast episode. And um, hi, Jake's mom. Yeah. Without her. This episode would not be at all without her. <laughs> none of these episodes would be a thing except for the uh, the one where I was missing in Mel's hole. But none of you would have understood that. And Ben also wouldn't have understood why he was making a joke about Jake and Mel's hole. <laughs> That's fair. But yes. That's all fair. Thank you, Mama. I love you. So, Benjamin, what do you know about spontaneous human boom booms? Uh... I mean, a bit. I can't say a lot, but I know that it's it's usually found after the fact. Those puddles of goo people burn out in strange, goo mysterious people. ways. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, so this has been around for a while. Quite a while. Like, before I was born. <laughs> in the 15th century. In the 15th century. Yeah, I wasn't born in the 15th century. That's when the first reported spontaneous boom boom happened of the human variety. You never hear a story about an animal spontaneously combusting, though. You know, I just thought that when you said that yeah. of the human variety. I've never heard of like a spontaneous deer combustion. Yeah. Must be spontaneous combustion is racist. Speciest? Speciest. <laughs> <Speciest. laughs> yeah. I take okay. all responsibility for my own reactions. <laughs> all right. So ever since the 15th century, there has been a heavily studded... Stud, stud, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Wish you weren't so fucking awkward, bud. <laughs> oh, awkwardness is what gets me through life. We got bud. a stroke in the first three minutes. I don't know that intro last a while. Okay. <laughs> Fair. Heavily studied anomaly that has terrorized masses. 
the thought of living a normal life and for no reason, no symptoms, no signs, it abruptly ends with no way to prevent it and a fireball. <laughs> <laughs> well, I meant like actual fireball. Not the drink. <laughs> so we'll get that then. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Yeah. Five shadowing. <laughs> In the 1400s, the first documented case of spontaneous, I'm calling it spontaneous combustion because apparently nothing else combusts. That's not entirely true. There's a reason they call it spontaneous human combustion. Other objects can spontaneously combust, like oily okay. rags or garbage, even. Okay, I'm calling it spontaneous living creature combustion. <laughs> I'm calling it spontaneous combustion. Okay. We all know I'm talking about humans. If I don't talk about humans, then I will specify. In the 1400s, the first documented case of spontaneous combustion came about. Late 1400s, Milan, a celebrating knight, was having a few drinks of strong wine. His name was Polonus Vorstius. And after drinking a bit too much... He pulled a full-on cartoon move and burped fire. Belched fire. Nice. He was proper. Surprisingly, his mood changed after this. Uh, not just his mood, but his ele elemental form. He was He was with a few people, including his parents. And allegedly after the fire burp, he kind of just burst into flames and uh, became a pile of ashes. And I know what you're thinking, Ben. Uh, this is how cavemen discovered fire. Yes. <laughs> and also how we decided in the 15th century that cremation could be a thing. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Next. Apparently we were safe for 300 years. Um, we're going to 1745 to hear about the Countess Cornelia Zangari and how she suffered a similar fate. Well, you got some names in here, bud. Yeah, yeah, this one's mostly memory, though. Um, so <clears throat> she said she was feeling a bit flush, a bit warm to, uh, her, uh, Uh, maid. I think that's what they were called back then still. But uh, told her maid that she wasn't feeling good. So her maid ran her a warm bath and uh, well after a couple of hours maid decided it's been a couple hours. I want to check on her. She goes in the bathroom and looks to see not a whole lot of Countess Cornelius left, or Cornelia, my bad. Yeah, not a whole lot of her left. Um, there was some ashes and a foot, and she didn't even make it into the bathtub. Um, because one of her, well, the leg that was remaining still had stockings and stuff on. So, so she just caught fire real fast. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, why didn't she just jump in the water? Because you burn from the inside. Drink it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hot bath. You Fuck think it. that would have helped? It's okay. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's do some science, Benjamin. Oh yeah. Okay. Sure. Let's go. <laughs> All right. You're pretty much a scientist. Okay. All right. You know how hot uh, they do the cremation process at? 1,237 degrees Fahrenheit. No? I just made that number up completely okay. out of my ass. <laughs> About 3,000 degrees Holy Fahrenheit. Holy shit, bud! Do you know how long the process takes? Six hours. Four to five hours. If you're real and fast. That's, huh? I meant if you're real fat. 
Yeah, yeah. Fat people take long. No, <laughs> fat people burn faster. Well, like if you're that mountain guy from Game of Thrones, he's probably going to take a while. That's a huge dude. I haven't watched Game of Thrones. Oh God, that is a lot of dude. I've I've heard there's a lot of dude in that show, and that's partially the reason I don't watch it. Oh, it's a good show. Are you gonna show me a picture? <laughs> I certainly am. <laughs> ben, that's a phallus. No, I haven't even showed you the picture yet. Phallus is a penis, everyone. Proper name. Sir got a foot thrusted upon his phallus. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds uncomfortable. Boy, this is awkward. Hold on, I'm sending you this picture. Mm. Oh, you're sending it to me? Yes. That way you can see it. There he I is know. next to two normally sized people. So as soon as you get that picture, you will know how big this motherfucker is. He's an extraordinarily large human. You got that the Jeopardy music on that uh, soundboard of yours? What kind of fuckery is this? As close as I got. <laughs> All right, I guess it worked. Oh, he is a large man. That's a lot of dude. <laughs> like that is a whole lot of fucking dude. He got a whole lot of forehead too. He's gonna take at least you know two three extra hours there to cook. Yeah. Yep. And even then, he's only coming out medium rare. I mean, facts. Okay. Well, yeah, so four or five hours it takes... <laughs> For a normal person. A normal human combustible to, like, turn to ashes and maybe a couple of teeth left. <laughs> um, <clears throat> In these cases... Some people have been left alone for little as an hour, and they're nothing but ashes. Um, other times, it's like, hey, we haven't seen this person in a couple of days. Let's check on them. And, oh, look, ashes and a burnt sofa. Um, but so yeah, so your point is that in a, in a lot of these cases, we're talking about heats in excess of 3000 degrees yes but it's not damaging like hardly anything in their houses hotels wherever it's not right i'm sure we'll get there some of the further stories i, I don't know i hope you uh <laughs> i hope you did your research all right this is this is the latest one that i found yeah 2010 um and they made headlines in September as the first Irish case of spontaneous human combustion. <laughs> the first Irish case. Oh, yeah. See, it's not racist. It's just speciesist. 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 Um, so people found a charred body of an elderly man lying with his head near the furnace of his apartment. Um, coroners determined, though the furnace was not the source of the conflagration, conflagration, don't even know what that word is, but it's a good word, nor was there an, what is with these words? Accelerant? Accelerant. Oh my goodness. That means thing that makes the fire burn better. But it's not spelled like that. <laughs> On the body. Nor was there evidence of... Oh, this word? Foul play. <laughs> 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 this case was a typical spontaneous human combustion in that there were no burns and anywhere in the house other than on the floor and the ceiling directly above the body. Nowhere else, though. Which is weird. It's weird. Um, so, there's this one that I couldn't find a whole lot on. But uh, this guy, 
he survived spontaneous combustion. Oh, okay. This is one I haven't heard yet. Somebody surviving okay. it. So his name's Jack Angel. Um, he was brought to the hospital with severe burns, and well, he uh, tried to sue his the company of his hot water heater. For $3 million, he said that it was malfunctioning, and he went to check on the malfunctioning heater, and it blew and scolded him. However, <clears throat> a doctor noted that his body had burned from the inside out, not the outside in. Shortly after, he changed his story and said he fell asleep, only to wake up with terrible burns all over his body, and sold his story as a survivor of spontaneous human combustion. And as far as we know, he's the only one who survived it. But yeah, he, he tried to sue, lost his court case after a doctor's like, uh, you were, you were on fire from the inside. That's fucking weird. I mean, however you're going to get your money, I guess. <laughs> um, this one was a crazy story. Um, in St. Petersburg, Florida, a landlady was making the rounds in an apartment building when she noticed one doorknob was incredibly hot. The tenant, Mary Reeser, did not respond to her calls and so she called for people to open the door because it was hot and she didn't want to burn her phalanges. Um, and so when she got in, she found Reese's remains in the middle of a six-foot scorched area of the carpet. Um, her remains were the, were the weird thing. Um... Nearby, there was an upright pile of newspapers that weren't touched by flame. They weren't burnt in any way. Um, the body was reduced to basically all ash, except for a completely undamaged foot and a skull. Now... The skull is where it gets really weird because she was a normal sized lady, but her skull had shrunk to the size of a teacup. Yeah, I remember hearing about this story. Skulls don't shrink. Yeah. I don't know, but that's so weird. Yeah, they they like they did some tests, dental tests. It was for sure her. Yeah, it's weird because skulls don't, they don't shrink. Uh-uh, head shrink, but they got to remove the skull first. Exactly, <laughs> and then shrink the skin. Right. That is how shrunken heads work, by the way. If you were ever curious, they don't actually use the skull. They just use the skin and the hair and then shrink it. Like they dry yeah. it out so it shrinks. Flipping weird. Skulls don't shrink. Uh-uh. Unless you combust, combust spontaneously. I mean, I'm sure they shrink a very, very little bit. Because there is some moisture inside. Right, but also heat expands, so it would most likely fracture the skull. The skull I mean, right, just, it would fracture it. Not Yeah. If you leave one out, like, to dry, it'll shrink a very minute little bit. Minute. But, yeah, in this case, with all the heat, it should have fractured and or burnt away. Yeah. Yeah, but they did test it, sir. Um, and her it was like one third the size it was supposed to be. Yeah, I remember hearing this story and it's fucking weird. Yeah. Okay. This one, we're going back in time again because this one's it ties into one of the ones I already said. Oh, um, oh I'm gonna do her. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> um so there's another one that made it to the courtroom just not for a living person 
Um, seventeen twenty-five. Um, Nicole Millet, the wife of a Persian innkeeper, was found after her husband roused the entire inn when he smelled smoke. Calm down, River. What was left of her was in the kitchen and almost completely reduced to ash, with the wooden utensils around her unburned. Other accounts have her burned on her straw pallet, with the straws only a little damaged. Straw, not straws, not drinking utensils, but like hey. <laughs> Dried grass. Yes. Which you fart wrong and that stuff lights up. Facts. That looks suspicious. And so her husband was tried and found guilty of murder. On appeal, though, he said the spontaneous human combustion defense. And he won. He wasn't the murderer. Um... Nicole's death was found to be due to a visitation from God. Does God just lit her ass on fire? I guess so. <laughs> Damn, nature! You scary! <laughs> There's another one in uh, 1945 or 1965, my bad. This guy was on a bus and he was getting close to his stop when he realized he looked up in a building and saw just smoke pouring out of this window. And so he calls and reports it on one of those wonderful uh, pre-cell phone cell phones, you know. Hi, yes, the old pay telephone. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so... Firefighters got there, police got there, and uh, there was no damage to the to the apartment other than a scolded floor. Your face is frozen all sorts of scary. There we go. I just wasn't um, moving. Yeah, but one of your eyes was like... You can't do it again. Um, but yeah, so when they got in, there is nothing left except for his arm, his right arm, which was like, when they say on touch, all I can think of is like a sliced off arm sitting in the like pile of ashes. Yeah, that does have a weird connotation yeah. to it. Let's give him a thumbs up <laughs> with our left hands. That's right. <laughs> Well, no, I'm hoping the hoping the arm is giving a thumbs up. <laughs> if I ever start feeling like I'm combusting spontaneously, oh yeah, I'm leaving. I'm throwing up a bird. Two middle fingers, <laughs> yeah. Hoping at least one makes it through the spontaneous combustion. Um, anything to add yet? No, I mean not yet. Not yet. All right. So, <clears throat> what do you think causes spontaneous combustion? I mean, I don't have any theories of my own because it's you just have no theories. So goddamn weird. So you don't think that it's like a visitation from holy or unholy intervention? No. Don't think it's celestial stardust. I mean, I guess that explanation it makes about as much sense as anything else that people come up with, but <laughs> like, but it's just so damn weird. All right. Well, I'm gonna read a couple of uh, theories. Um. So scientific investigations have attempted to analyze reported instances of spontaneous human combustion and have resulted in hypothesis 
hypotheses regarding potential causes and mechanisms, including victim behavior and habits, alcohol consumption, proximity to potential sources of ignition, as well as behavior of fires that consume melted fats, natural explanations, as well as unverified natural ph phenomena have been proposed to explain results and reports of spontaneous combustion. Current scientific consensus is that purported cases of spontaneous combustion involve overlooked external sources of ignition. So throughout history, they've tried to blame God. They, <laughs> they've tried to blame alcohol. They blame, they blame God, then they blame the devil. Probably. Then they blame the booze. That's kind of weird, actually. I have not come across any story, like even like 14, 15, 16, 17 century, all that stuff. Nobody ever blamed the devil. They say it's an act of God. Well, they're blaming God. <laughs> the devil is in the booze. Those are called spirits, Ben. Duh. <laughs> so I'm not an alcoholic, I'm a spiritualist. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they try to blame alcohol, they've tried to blame smoking. Um,. Fat, being fat can make you combust a bull. But the guy who uh, who survived it, he says he would drink as much as the next guy, like two, maybe three beers on a crazy week. <laughs> he didn't Ooh. smoke. I know. And so much alcohol. Look. By the time you drink enough alcohol to actually, like, become combustible, you would have been dead a long fucking time ago, yeah. <laughs> okay? Because it has to be over 100 proof. Like, yeah, it's got to be, you got to be, like, half alcohol at that point <laughs> in order for alcohol to be what catches you on fire. Yeah, you have to be 100 proof. Yeah. Your blood alcohol is just not going to do it on its own. Yeah, the day you drink enough to, like, draw blood and light your blood on fire. It's time for AA, bud. I can't remember where we were. Me neither. Oh, we were talking about alcohol and catching fire. Yeah. Catching Fire was all right, but I, I liked the first Hunger Games the best. <laughs> I'm so going to edit it to try and keep that in there. <laughs> uh, you're going to enjoy the editing process. It is fun. Oh. <laughs> You just, you just wait. Right, audience? Yes, Jake, just wait. All right, wherever you wanted to go from there. Um, okay. Okay. One spontaneous combustion case that particularly stands out is Jeannie Safin's death. Jeannie Safin was born with congenial abnormalities in Edmonton, London, resulting in mental disabilities that limited her abilities to those of a child. Her death occurred when she was 61 years old. She was with her father, Jack Safin, and brother-in-law Don Carroll at the Edmonton House on September 15th, 1982.
In the kitchen, Gina was seated with her father. When something took Jack Saffin's attention away from Janie, he noticed his daughter was on fire. What? That's weird. Did you, did you get that too? You said it took his attention away because his daughter was on fire. Took his attention away from Jeannie, who is his daughter. Because she's on fire? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> is that just written really weird? Yes. Jack and Don used water from the kitchen to put out the fire before calling an ambulance. Paramedics treated Jeannie on the way to the hospital where she was treated until she died eight days later of bronchopneumonia due to burns. Investigators are baffled since neither Jeannie's chair nor the adjacent walls were harmed by the fire or smoke, and the fire had no clear ignition source. P.C. Lee Marsden of the Edmonton Police Station believed it was an instance of spontaneous human combustion, the coroner disagreed, claiming there is no such thing, and rendered it an open judgment. See, and that's that's a really weird case, because, like, there's no cause for why she caught fucking fire. Yeah, and it was in front of someone. Like, some of these cases, they have, like, they're smokers, so you assume that an ash fell. It still does not explain everything that goes on. You know what I mean? But at least there's, like, a fire somewhere nearby. You know, like, a candle or a, a fireplace or what have you. Or you smoke a cigarette. Right. In this case, they have no even idea what might have done it. Yeah. Yeah, they just, like... Yeah, this one in particular is weird because there's two different witnesses and they're both saying the same thing. And she lived for nine days. Right. Bronchopneumonia. Yes. Is that bronchitis pneumonia? Uh, I would assume so. Huh. I always thought they were like Lungs filling up with fluid. I didn't know burns filled lungs up with fluid. I, I could try to ask an expert. Is she feeling better? No. Uh, let's ask Google later. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, we'll ask Google later. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bronchiosaurus pneumonia. <laughs> Brachiosaurus pneumonia. No, it's a bronchiosaurus. Bronchiosaurus. Yeah, it's sick. I'll get her on it this has... podcast one of these days. Huh? I'll get her on this fucking podcast one of these days. Which podcast? <laughs> Our podcast. <laughs> Our podcast is great. Okay. I mean, I can fucking Google it, but you could explain it. Okay, so from Google. Bronchopneumonia is a type of pneumonia, a condition that causes inflammation of the lungs. Symptoms can range from mild to severe and may include coughing, breathing difficulties, and fever. Causes include bacterial, viral, or fungal chest infections, or apparently burnt bronchial tubes. The fungus is the only thing that would make sense there. What the hell was that? That's an alien worm. It just comes on a train. It's weird. Oh, it didn't sound like a train this time. Usually I can hear the train very clearly. Uh, that's still not that close. But no, it's an, it's an alien worm. It just, it's on a train. Gotcha. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go to one of my favorite <clears throat> spontaneous combustion stories, and <clears throat> well, it's been a while since I since I heard this one, but bear with me. It happened in a little town in Colorado, about the year two thousand, maybe nineteen ninety nine, and it happened to a. A seven or eight year old boy named Kenneth McCormick. So uh, 
it was definitely alcohol. I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> the town is a little town that we all know. And I'll get to that. But <clears throat> young Kenneth McCormick had just gotten himself a girlfriend. He was as happy as could be when he realizes, well, he, he just kind of just burst into flames in front of everyone, like, gone. And this almost seemed like a chain reaction to this little town. And more and more reports of spontaneous combustion started taking place when they had no one else to turn to. So they look at the town's geologist for answers. The town's geologist was named Randy Marsh. And... <laughs> And he came up with a very, very clear theory on why this spontaneous combustion outbreak was happening. Because it was a fucking cartoon. <laughs> Give me a second, Benjamin. <laughs> Are you asking, do you want me to say motherfucker to you? People were holding in their gas too long. <laughs> and that was creating too much... Uh, Oh, what's it called? Why am I drawing a blank? Methane. Too much methane in their body, and it would cause spontaneous human combustion. So, just fart more, and that seemed to help out the world. But then the little town of South Park started warming up. So then they came up with a conclusion to fix global warming and spontaneous human combustion. Far when it's appropriate. Dang it, Bobby. That boy ain't right. <laughs> it's what I've got for your bullshit South Park crap. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't watched that episode so long and it was it was very hard to even attempt to make a straight face. <laughs> you ever had an Irish woman? <laughs> to stay in school and say no to drugs, yeah. Okay, <laughs> do you have anything else serious about <laughs> commu spontaneous human combustion or no? Um, I got one more story if you want to hear it. All right, bring it on. All right. <laughs> Young Kenneth McCormick. Got a new girlfriend. You motherfucker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this happened in 1986. Kendall Mott, George Mott's son, visited him after he had not returned numerous phone calls. Kendall discovered brown windows and a smoky interior. He discovered the remains of his dad inside his chamber, which means his house. Ash, a few bone splinters, and a chunk of skull were all that remained. He perished from spontaneous combustion according to the relatively confined damage. George Mott, ironically a veteran firefighter, was not a smoker, unlike some of these stories. As a result, he couldn't have accidentally gotten ashes on his outfit or anything like that. An inquiry revealed no evidence of external ignition. I'll get to this after. That said, skeptics think he died for a plausible reason. George was a previous drinker and smoker. So he may have been uh, despondent and opted to light up a cigar or a cigarette. He might have lit himself on fire if he dropped it on himself. Okay, now I have a question about this one. 
Um, when your ashes, a few chunks of bone and a chunk of skull, how do they like, do they look at it and be like, ah, he wasn't lit on fire from the outside? I have no idea how you would come to that conclusion. And then they change it around and they're like, ah, he dropped a cigarette, lit himself on fire. He's an ex-smoker. He's prone to these things. Yeah, I don't I don't know how they come to those conclusions. Yeah. It's a weird one. Do you have anything to add? I mean, we could go into a couple of the other explanations. Okay. Because we covered, you know, like smoking, right? A lot oh, of people yeah. think smokers are to, you know, because you, you drop your cigarette or something, you catch fire. Right? Just saying, stop dropping roll has been a thing since like 1985. People I'm, know how to do it. I'm saying I've dropped plenty of cigarettes on myself and I have not spontaneously combusted yet. Right. He's just had skin grafts on 40% of his body. Which brings me to the wick effect hypothesis. Now, in some ways, this one does kind of make sense. So what it is, people have a layer of fat some people I have don't. a bigger layer than others fat is indeed flammable that's true it burns quite hot and it, it burns does. quite slow now whether or not it burns to like 3000 degrees i'm not sure they say they have tested this hypothesis with uh dead pigs where they've pretty much lit the pig on fire and the fat acts like a candle and just burns and burns and burns and burns and burns. Okay. However, I don't, I kind of like, if the person is still alive when this begins to happen, I do not see this as a, a viable hypothesis for someone who is living. Because if you catch fire when you're living, trust me, I've done it. You put the fucking fire out. <laughs> like if Yeah. You, if you can. Oh, yeah. I mean, my old job, I used to get lit on fire all the time or have red pieces of metal laying down my boot all the time on my ankle. Yeah, yeah. I've, I still I've do that work and, and I still, it. you know, receive new scars. And well, oh, you're talking, talking about, about a different job. job. I do I a have... job that works with fire. I have caught fire. Yeah. I have scars all over my arms from hot pieces of metal falling on me. Uh, I've had fireballs on my face because apparently beard oil is flammable uh <laughs> you know yeah that was fun i smelled like french fried beard hair for like three days and my girlfriend was very that. upset because i had to shave the goddamn thing off or because uh, it looked funny <laughs> so i'm not like if you're still alive when that happens i don't really give the wick effect a whole lot of credence because like you said stop drop and roll or you're gonna smack the fire something you're gonna put it out somehow yeah um, so I was actually talking to someone at work about this, trying to get a couple more ideas. Mm -hmm. And he said, when your body knows that it's doomed, it like when people are about to die, they go into like an almost relaxed state. It's their brain's way of like calming them down. Like, they'll hallucinate, they'll pass out, fall asleep. Um, like, the guy who survived it, he was asleep. Only woke up to tremendous burns on his body. That's, like... I mean, okay. Like, so, I got third-degree burns on both my palms, and, well, my biggest struggle... Not to sound like a wimp here, but my biggest struggle walking to the EMT room was uh, keeping the lights on. Like, probably four or five times the lights just started going out. Like, I was very tunnel visioned. Well, right. An excess of pain will cause you to lose consciousness. Right. And what I burnt my hands on was, I want to say, 2,000 degrees, and that touched it for 
three seconds, two seconds. Right. And I right. got third degree burns. And it has to be significantly hotter than that to cause the type of burns. So hot enough to if your fat is burning for long enough, it's not necessarily heat, it's the extent or the length of time to which it'll burn. Yes, but but it's still like I said, like if you're a, an alive awake human being, when your shirt catches fire, you're gonna put that out. Yeah, but like well before it breaks into your subcutaneous fat layer and starts to scorch you to death. But in most of the, pretty sure all of these cases, the fire doesn't start on clothes. It starts inside. How are you supposed to pat well, out? Well, the theory is, is that an external source catches the clothing on fire, which then burns into the subcutaneous fat layer of the human body, causing the wicking that we talked about earlier. So essentially, what it's saying is the fat or the fire catches on your clothes, splits your skin. And the fat starts to, like, leak out and essentially turn into, like, an oil lamp. That's so, the theory. All right. I, I, I got a question about that. Said job where I got all my burns and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we would have to throw, like, glowing red hot cast iron. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times it would touch your arm. And your skin would just melt off. Mm -hmm. Like as soon as it touched, it would just melt. Doesn't skin melt? Not like just catch on fire? Well, the fat underneath will, if I think the theory is if it soaks like into the clothing on the outside, it'll, it'll become a wig, but it, the fat will burn. Right. If you get it hot enough. Okay. I think that's the theory anyway. I just don't have enough fat to combust, I guess. Well, I mean, I do, and I've been on fire a few times. You're on fire now. <laughs> <And I'm>... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. And yeah. I have yet to actually, like, go up in flames. So I don't know how I really... I know, like, theoretically under, you know, controlled circumstances that that theory works. But I don't think these are the circumstances all the time in which we can say it works. You know, especially the cases of no known external, you know, cause of flame. Like, how do you explain that one away? I'm fighting a major foot cramp right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How do I explain which one away? I'm sorry. That's a good one. My uh, toe went like way over like 90 degrees when there is no external source of fire how do you explain it so this is probably going to get me some hate but do i care no what if the people that this is happening to that this whole phenomenon has happened to. What if they're shitty people and it's just God smiting them? I mean, I guess that's as good a theory as any of the others. I can't Smite. prove it's not the fact, the case. Right. What if, like, Thor, what if he's throwing a lightning bolt at him and they just. Whoosh. So, <laughs> John Abramson suggested again, John Abramson Abramson suggested Sorry. that ball lightning could account for spontaneous human combustion. Yeah, I read that. <laughs> I also read that a meteor could too. If it was a meteor though, like ball lightning, I get like it can come in through a window or something. A meteor would leave a hole in the roof. I'm just saying a meteor could come in. What if they got a skylight? That'd be a good angle to come in through a window. <laughs> I guess it's possible. Like, I can see is. the sky from right here through this window. I mean, heat rises. What if it's cold and it just, like, <laughs> arcs? Throws a curveball. Yeah, yeah smoke someone right in the forehead or something, and all they got left is a chunk of skull. It's a slider. It just dips <laughs> coming in <laughs> on you. Yeah. 
Okay, but <laughs> here's my favorite theory. Ready? In his 1976 book, Fire from Heaven, UK writer Michael Harrison suggests that spontaneous human combustion is connected to poltergeist activity. (laughs) He argues, quote, the force which activates the poltergeist originates in and is supplied by a human being, end quote. Within the concluding summary, Harrison writes, Quote, spontaneous human combustion, fatal or non-fatal, belongs to the extensive range of poltergeist phenomena. End quote. So be careful if you go to 30 East Drive. You might... <laughs> Fred might light your ass up. All that was found was a chunk of skull and keys. <laughs> <laughs> nice callback, sir. <laughs> Pontifract. Pontifract. The Black Monk. I recall this episode. Perhaps he's black because he's charred. The charred monk of Pontifract. The charred monk of Pontifract. We done unraveled the mystery, bud. Yep. He got pissed off because he got burned to death <laughs> by a different poltergeist. I think we figured I'm it still, out. I'm still looking for like a haunted kfc story so we can do like poultry geist poultry geist i'm waiting for it haunted accordion you get a polka geist are we doing this again ben (laughs) all right that's enough torturing the people for today got anything else about spontaneous human combustions haunted casino poker geist (laughs) i'm gonna take that as a no And I'm going to say, as always, we really appreciate you guys listening. We appreciate the support. And if you enjoy the show, please don't forget to tell a friend. And good night. Thanks for the idea, Mama. Excuse my swearing. (laughs) Oh, and good night, everyone. I love you. pee their name into the snow. Chuck Norris pees his name into concrete. Chuck Norris, the only man that can slam a revolving door. (laughs) Chuck Norris can move so fast that he punches and hits himself in the back of the head. Do you ever see the VH1 Where Are They Now special about Chuck Norris? No. It was the shortest one ever because all it did was flash the screen that said behind you. (laughs) (laughs) the only time chuck norris made a mistake is when he thought he made a mistake so chuck norris and mr t were gonna have a sparring match but they knew what level of chaos and destruction this would cause so they traveled through space and time to find a safe spot to do it we now know this event as the big bang chuck norris drove his mom home after she uh Gave him, gave birth to him in the hospital because he thought she needed a rest. Outer space exists because it doesn't want to be on the same planet as as Chuck, Chuck Norris. Norris. <laughs> Do you know Mr. T invented the alphabet? First, he invented the letters M, R, and T, and then he invented the rest of the alphabet so we could call things by names that don't mean totally awesome. <laughs> you know there is intelligent life out there it's intelligent to stay away from the planet with chuck norris on it did you know mr t invented fools then realizing the error of his way he invented pity <laughs> Who's Mr. T? <laughs> you know damn well who Mr. T is. Yeah, that's true. I should get some Mr. <laughs> T sounders. Pity the fool. I pity the fool. All of that might become the uh, after episode cut. <laughs> Just... <laughs> <laughs>
I am recording. <laughs>